Corky was always uh, very talkative, chatterbox, you know. For example, I used to come home and he'd be sitting on the fence waiting for me. He hadn't, he didn't go to school yet. And he'd start telling me about everything that happened in, <laughs> you know, in the immediate neighborhood there. And we, we had a lot of fun with him. As we, as we grew a little older, he spent some time in New Mexico with one of my half-sisters. And she said that uh, he was already an organizer. <laughs> He's only, he was only uh, about six years old at the time. But he used to have kids gather in a circle, and he'd be the, he'd be the speaker. <laughs> well, I think that's where he got his start. Even as a child, you know, he could get people's attention. People yeah. were attracted to him. And I don't care if it was white, black, Asian, and they would share their stories with him, and they would talk about their beliefs and their philosophy with him. Going to the Poor People's Campaign also helped me see him in, in a different light. And I didn't see him as a Chicano leader. I always saw him as a people's leader. I saw how the African Americans in this city listened to him. The pastors and the reverends respected him and created coalitions that we've not seen since. I saw how he dealt, you know, in the Poor People's Campaign with the Appalachian Whites. Mm -hmm. I mean, his compassion and his humanity, humanity was never really properly recognized. I always saw him as a humanitarian, fighting for human rights. I never re relegated it to civil rights. That meant it meant something to the government. He was fighting for human rights. And the in American Indian Movement, Native Americans, they say today, had Corky and the Crusade not supported them, their leadership would have all been killed. Puerto Rican independence movement, mm -hmm. Mexico solidarity movement. There were just so the many Jewish people that he yeah, tried to, you know, that he would collaborate, embrace. He was the first person in a movement, even before, a year before Martin Luther King, who stood up against the Vietnam War, a person of color. That was not easy to do, especially in our community. That was very difficult to do. Cesar Chavez didn't even do it, but he took that stand a year before Martin Luther King came out with his incredible speech against the Vietnam War. What he talked about it is understanding the type of oppression our people, our community, got through within this own, its own, within our own homeland. 